Hello everyone, welcome to my class for NSD 2022. We are going to create a single page layout today with some layering techniques and white space. I hope you're ready, so yes, let's get started. For my layout today, I chose these beautiful papers from 49 and Market. This one I will use mainly for fussy cutting the flowers and the butterflies and maybe some areas that will also be okay for layering. And this will be the background and the burnt orange one will be the frame in the back. I like to frame my layouts. It just looks um, a little bit finished off, more finished off for me, but that is a personal choice. First, I want to trim the, the barco strip, this one, uh, off so that we don't forget it to do it in the end. And this one. I'm going to trim, trim this strip because this is maybe a strip that we can use. Yes, that's something interesting. And then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and just a half a centimeter on each side. So let's measure the ears. Top and bottoms, half a centimeter. And let's see on this side, I think. I'm going to trim this side because I don't want to take more of the, the leaves away. Alright. I like the layering illusion that you get from various techniques on, in various steps. So before we adhere this to the frame, you can see it's about five millimeters on on each side so half a centimeter on each side uh, I want to distress the edges because it gives it another layer just about another dimension so I just use this distressor and distress the edges a little bit you can also do that with the inside of a pair of scissors if you don't have a distressing tool. It's quite easy. I can show you these little scissors. So what you do is you just open it up and you just do this. And don't worry if it tears a little bit because it just gives it more dimension. So I think in this instance, I'm not sure what your paper would look like today, but in this instance, I've got something happening across the page with some, some details on the side. So my focal point, I think I'm going to put maybe on this side and before I adhere it, I would like to maybe punch a little bit of border punching on, on the edges just to, to add more interest or dimension, if you like. And not right through the whole one, maybe just here and there. Okay, let's do maybe some there. And what about maybe here? go and think about here. Perfect. Okay, so we can adhere this now to the background or not the background but the frame part. Just want to add a little bit of dressing to the edges. Little bit 
more dimension to it. Give it a little bit more interest. There we go. All right. And I think this is okay. If you like to chalk it, uh, you're welcome to do that. It also gives it more another dimension, more dimension, more layering effect. Okay, let's use some of this double-sided tape. I don't stick the double-sided tape right to the edge, just in case you want to just lift it up a little bit more. Or Slip something in behind it that sometimes also uh, gives an interesting effect. Let's just do that. It's also not wrong to use a glue of your choice. Um, and if you have, if you're going to maybe put it in, in an album or a frame and you have enough space, you can even lift this um, background page from the frame to give it a little bit more depth. I don't do that because although it looks really nice, um, there's no space in the album for it and that is a bit of a problem. Eventually that becomes so thick that you know, they get damaged so yeah maybe sometimes when I put something in a frame I I do that okay let's just get this all just back things off sure that it is well spaced there we go okay great all right now our background is ready for the next step i'm going to use this photograph of my daughter and my next step is going to be some texture paste and a stencil I like this doily stencil so I think I'm going to use this doily stencil because I'm also going to use doilies later on in the layering and that will just be a repeat of what we we do already have let's do this here Go. and maybe just repeating on this side as well I like to put some extra color on on the background and I'm going to use watercolor paint these various things that you can use so many things on the market at the moment I enjoy the watercolor paint it's just easy and I like the translucent effect of it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some splatters of this orangey color and also maybe a little bit here let's just add a little bit more water there we go you will notice that there are certain areas 
that I didn't splatter or put any texture paste and this is the areas that I'm going to keep open as white space. The white space contrasts with the areas that are layered and busy. So for the next step, um, let's go with some book paper. And um, yeah, I would, I would like this sort of distress feeling um, to be repeated. So I just tear the edges so that it is not like straight, straight and a little bit more interesting. Now starts the part where you are building your background. I don't adhere anything until I'm like at the end and certain what I want to do. So let's see, we will start with that. My photograph will be here somewhere. So what else do we have? Um, I've got this frame that I'm also going to use in the background, maybe towards that side. like the color of that um, fine so let's do some fussy cutting first before we continue most papers these days have got interesting barcode strips so if you look at this there's some interesting sentiments and pictures so we might even be able to use that as well let's see let's fussy cut some flowers and butterflies um. there we go our butterflies all right this is the way I want to go but there's definitely more details needed in the background so I'm going to put this aside for a moment this is my basis but I would like to put a little bit of stamping in the background I like this sort of foliage stamp so let's try a little bit of foliage stamp in the background And I don't want it too harsh. I just want it sort of faded. So I think I'm going to just stamp it on, on a piece of paper first and then add secondary color to it. So if you don't want it too dark, just stamp on a piece of paper first. Like I've been doing now, and um, then it's more faint, if you know what I'm trying to say. Right, so let's just move this out the way and add some leaves there as well, just to again repeat what you've been doing on the other side. That one can be a little bit darker. Let's do that. There we go. Now let's see again. All right, and what about a little bit on this side? To my focal point so that is where we've got the focal point we're going to use that and that and I think maybe another piece of this paper will be great
just take a little bit of watercolour and just give it a little bit of colour to blend in with, with the rest of the layout. And this you can do with it, with any anything. You can also use the stress inks. But you can see again, I've, I've, keep, I've kept certain areas open, so this is, I keep as a white space, and this is where my design is going to be. And if you keep the rule of thirds in um, in mind, you will also see that it, it's not exactly in the center; it is just off center, and um, that also makes it more pleasing to the eye. I like the idea of adding color and. Recently, I've used watercolor paints as my preferred uh, color. You know, there's so many things that we've been using over the years, and watercolor is just something that I find, I don't know, not easier, but I find it nice to work with. Maybe because I have control, a little bit more control. thinking about some some gauze because the photograph is actually quite wispy and I thought maybe a piece of gauze or if you have cheesecloth um, would actually make it look soft and, and hazy or dreamy more dreamy i think so let's see what i normally do is i just put it in the back and then maybe trim it or tear it a little bit afterwards because it's difficult to see to cut it exactly or precisely This can also then serves as the adhesive to, to add it there. I think there we need to put some foam tape to make sure that it doesn't go into the center area there. So do this. Just make sure that it's not skew I must say sometimes I just realize afterwards that my photographs are skew or the center <laughs> the, the focal point is skew sometimes it happens eh? Right, 
All right, so before I adhere the butterflies, I want to just have a look and see um, what we can do with more flowers and also with some ribbons. So I've got some some of the flowers. I'm, I must confess, I like small flowers much more than large flowers. So I always try and use the small flowers, but sometimes large flowers also looks nice. But I like small flowers. So let's see what we have in the line of small flowers. I'm going to do the butterflies at the end. And also, I quite like this barcode strip. Um, it's got the colors of the layout and it's got all these little sentiments. So why not use it? And I think the, the layout actually lends itself to the sentiment. So let's put that down there. Let's see what we can do with flowers. Here are some little flowers and even the leaves. So let's see. I like this. to look like something there. Yeah. Of course, if you don't have art stones, you can just use ordinary beads or um, these glass beads work also very now all pieces of what is those things called? Sequence. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm. Okay. Just to recap on the layering, if you don't have a lot of paper and you want to layer, you can, I mean, and I didn't even layer that much, you can use uh, layers of papers unrelated to the, the the paper collection that you've that you've used. I mean I've, I've got three pieces of paper here. One is the background, one is the frame around the background and then I've done some stamping, I've done some uh, stenciling which you can't really see now except for there and there maybe. Um, I've done some stamping. The stamping and the splattering um, just added to the design of the background paper already but it added another layer um, it gave, uh, gave it a little bit of depth and also some of um, the watercolor that I've added and um, if you're scared that you are going to ruin your paper you can obviously paint it with gesso first clear gesso I must be honest most of the time I forget to do it um, and then you know I just add my watercolor paint to it and I've never really messed up a page 
but um, if you're scared that you're going to make it too wet and, and mess it up then obviously that is the way to go uh, you can also use other coloring methods um, what is important um, about this lesson is that yes the, the, there may be areas that you just keep um, plain and open and this is what what is your white space you don't have to stick things on all over the page uh, some sometimes you it, it, it works sometimes it doesn't I'm sure that there's many more things that you can add if you like but this is this I think I'm done with this page it's got its layering it's got its white open space and all right now it's just for the gel medium to dry and um, the layout is done Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed creating this layout with me. Enjoy the rest of the NSD 2022 and I truly hope to see you soon. Goodbye.